What is up everybody, Derek here from DW Designs and today we're going to be making an aluminum tank for a Chevy C20. If you guys stick around, you guys will see a little hidden feature that not everyone will get to see. Let's get to work. So now we're diving into this, let me point out a few things. Making an aluminum tank for your truck or vehicle or anything like that generally is not too difficult to do. The biggest things are making sure you get the right measurements, the right angle so the gas flow goes to where your pickup is, and if you're welding aluminum, the most challenging part about aluminum is welding it. But over time, you get better at it and then you get proficient to the point where you don't have to worry about it anymore, you just dab away and you're good to go. Let's dive into to how I got the measurements. All right, so here we are in the back section of the frame on this 1969 Chevy C20. Now, I want you guys to know that we're building the tank uh, kind of square or rectangle shape. We're not looking to match the frame lines on this vehicle this time. Um, however though, if you guys want the option to do so, you can do that because if you notice here, um, it's probably really hard to capture on camera at the angle that you guys are at, but this actually slopes out. You guys can do that in the tank, but then you're just adding another factor into play that you're gonna have to account for when you're going to bead roll it, uh, weld it, and all that fun stuff. Um, which is not a big deal, but just keep that in mind if you decide to do that. Now, we measured the back of the frame here, inside to inside, which was uh, 27 and three quarter, roughly. Your guys's might be different, so don't take this measurement uh, based off of this because every vehicle is different and you do not want to just assume that one size fits all kind of deal. The front, because it goes out, obviously we get a lot more room. So we decided to stick with 27 inches wide throughout the whole entire thing. Same thing with front to back. We did this measurement also, which was 26 and 9 16 And then we subtracted just a little bit and we made it 26 inches even. So guys, that's how we took the measurements on that. Oh, and before I forget, <laughs> depth. Depth was kind of a, um, it was kind of a just guess, guesstimation, if you guys want to call it that. Um, because this is not an off-road vehicle, we're not taking it off-roading, this is just going to be street only vehicle. We decided we're going to go 11 inches down and then up here nine or 10 inches up here. So we got a one inch drop from front to rear, which makes it very uh, likely to drain the fuel into where the pickup tube is. All right, so you have all your numbers written down on a piece of paper. You roughly got an idea of where everything needs to be, where it needs to go, or where you want it to go. It just depends on you guys, on what you want to do. It's all about creativity, guys. Creativity, creativity, creativity. Do the best that you can do at your own game. That's all I'm gonna tell you. So. You should end up with something like this, cardboard template. I would highly recommend that every single one of you cut everything out of cardboard first, reassemble it together, tape it together with cardboard and test fit it because this is a very crucial part. I personally didn't do that with this tank. I know very hypocritical, I understand. However though, I've done a few of these before. So I understand the fact you have to play for an account for certain things. With that being said, I do have an example and I'll post it right here and you guys can see that. That was a fender well tub that I made for some sort of drag racing vehicle that a customer brought it to me and said, uh, here, I just need this fender made, but a uh, fender well, excuse me, but made deeper, but literally the same. And so I made a cardboard template of it first to make sure all my lines and measurements and everything was correct before I go and cut it out of aluminum. Because if I would have cut that out of aluminum without testing it, oh boy, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Probably would have lost out on 50 to a hundred dollars roughly in between materials and time and all that stuff, just use cardboard. All I'm gonna say, I've learned the hard way many times. So use cardboard to your advantage. It only costs a dollar a sheet and that's 
it's like a three foot by four foot sheet is it's cheap so buy it okay so i just watched the last clip the last bit sounded a little bit harsh not forcing you guys to do anything you don't have to do anything i say or my opinion doesn't matter i'm just giving you guys pointers on how to become a better fabricator i'm getting better every single day i want that for you guys too because i learn things the hard way and i go oh okay do it this way now now we're good so enough of my rant now we got pieces cut out i'm not going to show that process that takes too long and everyone knows how to cut aluminum so use a pair of shears sharp shears if you have them or electric shears or even better yet if you have a stomp shear and one more above that is electric shear and that, that you just that's a dream everyone wishes they had one <laughs> all right so you should look Something like this. You have your aluminum cut out, raw form. Now, I already did jump the gun. These are already rounded bead rolled edges. You'll see in the video the next step. However, not everybody has a bead roller. Not everybody has $2,500 to fork out and buy one of these things if you're building one of these at home. But guys, don't get your head wrapped around it that you have to have this. It's awesome. You can do many, many, many things with it. But if you're just gonna do a, like a one-time tank thing, you don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to buy one. Just do regular butt joint seam well square overlap 50 50 and then weld that with a heavy bead and then you can sand it round and it'll look very very nice as well this is just an extra bonus so just keep that in mind because like something like this um, I plan on making some of these tanks and selling them so like I'll offer different options you know one with rounded bead rolled edges one with just a regular weld no weld you know there's a whole bunch of options that we can go with edges are all bead rolled we're ready to go let's start tacking welding the beautiful thing together because in my opinion it's art so let's do this wait before you go on the next video i forgot to mention <laughs> i was thinking about it um you can still round the corners over like a bead roller however it's a lot more challenging and a lot more patience because i've had to do it before um on particular things that won't fit in the bead roller or just when i didn't have one because i didn't have one um i didn't have one for a long time so this right here okay guys um this is a perfect example of what you can use this for. This is for like metal shaping, metal forming, you know, like coach building type stuff if you guys have heard of that before. Um, this is an awesome, awesome idea. Uh, I learned this from a, a guy. Uh, his name was uh, Bill, but I learned a lot from that guy. And this was one of them. Making your own, I'm going to call it a, a tubular die where you can lay your piece of aluminum on top right down the center line where you want the bend to start and then you just lightly tap it with a soft hammer all the way across and make it nice and perfect to form this piece right here. So keep that in mind. You can do anything. Anything is possible if you believe in yourself and in your mind. So let's head on over to the bead roll video. All right, guys, many of you probably recognize this bead roller. For those of you who have watched my previous bead rolling video, getting this, opening it, doing a little review, testing and all that. Uh, here we are on another project. Did a couple projects with this already. Uh, didn't get those on film, but we're getting this one on film. So we'll show you guys a little bit on what we're doing. So if you watched the previous video that I made on this machine, we're using a tank roll as we call it uh, specifically for doing tanks or or even just oddball stuff you want to weld together and make it a nice rounded edges kind of like uh, what I showed you guys earlier with the uh, fender well let's get to it so Real quick, make sure your aluminum is prepped. Make sure it's as straight as you can get it. Um, I do not have a stomp shear or anything or a hydraulic shear. I meant to say that earlier, not electric shear. Um, I used a pair of electric shears, handheld electric shears, to cut these out. And I used a, a file to straighten them out. Not the most efficient way of doing things, um, but a stomp shear is pretty pricey. Uh, they're around three to four grand. So, and I personally don't have that kind of money to work out right now. Yeah, so I do everything by hand, but make sure it's prepped. Make sure all your edges are smooth. Uh, I'm not gonna cut the dies because these are uh, polyester or polymer dies, basically plastic. And we don't want to damage these because these can be quite pricey to uh, replace or repair. For Preferably replace. <laughs> so enough of me rambling on here. What we're gonna do is we're going to, this is the front panel. We're gonna do the back panel and all that stuff as we go. You want to make sure that it's the right, correct orientation, which for the front and back panel doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tighten this down onto the piece of aluminum. 
and you get just tight and you don't want to do one turn after that. Consistency is key here to make a consistent edge radius. Now there's a lip on the inside here and then there's a lip up here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but the idea is you want to keep it in between those two lips. It'll curl or curve it up. So let's get started. By the way, this is a variable pedal. So if you see me speeding up or slowing down, that's because uh, I got variable speed on this one. You know, man, we want a job done right and we want it done quick. What do we need? This mean machine is not loud. This is a little problem I need to fix. It keeps catching on the edge here. If you guys have this problem, don't get your finger stuck in between there. I beg you. And you're just gonna ride that edge right along there. You don't always get it the first pass, so don't try to get it the first pass if you can't do it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Like right now, we did most of it on the first pass, but on the front edge here, we didn't quite get it. So we're not gonna worry about that too much right now. But we are gonna, we're gonna start up high. Oh, see, now I just made a mistake there, but that's all right, we'll come back. Gotta fix that, I gotta fix that. That's easy, you just grind a little bit off the bottom of the table. You can easily fix that. Just gotta have time to do it, that's all. Now we're running a second roll here through the machine. Same, following the same curvature, same line. No marker or anything needed for this, for this particular setup. All right, so we got a little dent here at the end. Um, don't worry about that too much. It's not gonna create too much of a problem, but see how we got a pretty nice and even round edge here. Hopefully you guys can see that. There's a little deviation right in here, but that's, don't worry about that. We'll get into that as we're welding it together. I'll show you guys what we do to fix some of this stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and try and get this correct here. Bingo, there it is. All right, gotta fix that, I really do. It's not a problem from the factory, usually with, with, with these bead rollers. Um, I just happened to have one that does that. So I've um, never had an issue with them before. See, I still got a little bit of an issue, but I'm not gonna stress about this guys because honestly, this other edge that rolls right over, it's gonna take most of this out. And that's when a hammer and dolly comes into effect too. If you know how to do body work, uh, basic body work, you can do that as well. Kind of like that tube I showed you guys earlier. Here. One more time. Doing everything twice. You could do it more if you want, but there's really no need to. Third edge. Gonna get it up on the lip there. Straighten it out. Lift it up a little bit. There we go. I know this is kind of a boring process, guys, but I just kind of want to show you live time on one of them, just so you guys know roughly how long it takes to do something like this. Last edge. There we go. Now we got nice rounded edges. We're good to go. All right, now, just before we get ready to weld, it should look something like this. I got you guys on the gimbal, so let's turn you around. All right, so here we go. This is what it should look like. Should look something like this. <laughs> Sorry guys, that's still classified on what we're doing yet, but stay tuned and you'll get to see it. So, with that being said, I'm gonna get the tungstens sharpened up, get the welder set up, I'm gonna grab a couple scrap pieces of aluminum and then we will get right into tacking this thing together. Let's get back to work. Whoa, we just got this stuff all cleaned up. As you can see there, how dirty the rag was after we wiped it all off. These things have to be perfectly clean, especially for welded aluminum. Remember, when welded aluminum, clean, 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 clean. You cannot be clean enough. So be as clean as possible and, you know, just 
just make it clean. That's all I gotta say. Now, one thing you guys will notice is, uh, I know it's hard to tell on the camera, but I did not make the tip sharp. It's almost rounded. The reason why I did that is because my machine, I figured out the best way to weld aluminum with my machine is to have it already slightly rounded, then weld. I have a newer machine, but I don't have one of the newest machines, you know, with all the fancy gizmos. I sold that machine uh, about three or four months ago. Um, maybe not quite that long, but I like this machine better. It's a workhorse. Let's go on to the next. Alrighty guys, we got the tungsten prep, got the welder all hooked up, ready to go. Made sure it was on aluminum settings, turn the gas on, and now all that's left to do is do a test run. So what I highly recommend is to take a sample out of the piece of aluminum that you're working with. So if you bought uh, one full panel to do this tank job, take a small bit out of that panel and use it to test because thickness will be the same. Um, aluminum is very finicky. So if there's something in the aluminum, you'll be able to figure that out really quickly. And as well as gas, if your gas is bad too, your argon, uh, if it, it could be bad, it doesn't happen all the time, but it could be, and that'll create problems in your weld as well. Let's get to test welding these pieces. You got your pieces done. They look great. They look a lot like this. Now, what you're looking for is, don't care what the weld looks like right now. That doesn't matter at all. What really matters is the penetration on the inside, how it goes all the way through. That's what she said. <laughs> With aluminum on a gas tank, it needs to be all the way through because of the fact that it's gonna hold fluid and it's gonna be slightly pressurized. So therefore it needs to have full penetration. Plus, I particularly don't care what the weld looks like on this particular tank. Normally I'm very picky about how my welds look, what the final product looks like as far as welding goes, but this I really don't care because they're gonna get ground off. It's gonna be a nice rounded edge and I'll show you a perfect example of that in a second of a project that I did for my fiance. We made these at the fab school originally and there was a few of them that were thrown in the trash can from a couple of other students prior. I was like you know what I'm gonna fix them so I grabbed one fixed it and then sandblasted it did all the work that we would do to it normally but however though uh, that's not the case in point the case in point is uh, the edges how they flow up the vase is what we're looking for there's gonna be no weld showing it's just gonna be a nice rounded edges and I will show you the picture of that now. So now you get an idea of what we're trying to accomplish on the edges. So now you understand why I do not care about welds as far as looks go. So plus these aren't half bad. They're not the greatest in the world that I've done, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Let's get to tacking this tank up. Let's get back to work. It is a little embarrassing, not gonna lie. It's really difficult to do this by yourself. So if you got a buddy, have him help you. I have a few buddies, but they're not here today. So I'm gonna attempt to do this myself. So let's do this thing. Off the record, I couldn't do it. It's just too tough. Um, so I went ahead and sanded all the little mess ups off, got it clean again. And one of my best friends who owns this truck is uh, coming right now. So we'll uh, wait a few minutes for him to get here and then we will tack it together. We'll get back to work when he gets here. 20 minutes later. All right, I'm excited. Tank is all tacked up, pretty much ready to go as far as the top. Not putting that on yet until we have all the 
parts to complete the top piece and weld those in as well as just you know final little touches like baffling here's an example of that right here we're going to be making something like this with a 90 degree bend on the bottom and the sides to keep the fuel from sloshing around on the inside and creating damage or making your vehicle move around like nothing all right so i apologize i'm gonna be doing a lot of talking so i told you guys in the beginning of the video for those of you who actually stuck around i'm very happy you did now it's time to unveil this because I told you I would. I thought about waiting until the next video because I am going to make this part one of probably two, maybe three. Uh, I don't want to drag this out too long, but I did say I was going to show you. So I'm going to hold my word because uh, I'm just that kind of person. So here we go. That's right, we did a Chevy bow tie emblem on the bottom of the tank. I know this is uh, overkill, overboard, or whatever you guys wanna call it, but we just thought it was cool. So we went ahead and did it, but I do have a challenge for you. There are gonna be more videos of myself and my one of my best friends, Robert, working on the truck. So you guys will see what it looks like and everything by the time it's done. I'm pretty sure of that. But I, the one challenge I have is if you see this truck out somewhere, look underneath it and take a picture of the tank with the bow tie on it and send it to me. If you get it right and send it to me, I'll send you guys a sticker or maybe even a surprise hat. But with that, that's this episode. All of you guys who are watching, I want you guys to go out there and be the fabricator that you can be. So if you're watching this because you want to learn how to fabricate, great. If you're watching it just because you want to watch it and it's fun. I appreciate that too. So, but I'm going to give advice to you out there that uh, want to become fabricators and want to do in this in the workforce. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Now, I'm not here to pummel you guys with my religious beliefs or faith, but I want to show you guys something, talk to you guys. So every day I read this, this is my goals that I want to make and that I want to achieve this year, this month, this week, today, or whatever. And I write it down in this book and I read it every day as well as I make to-do lists, stuff like that for the fab shop here that I do, including YouTube videos. So with that, I wanna open up my Bible here and read you guys a verse and explain to you as to why I believe that this is essential to being successful in anything you do in life. We're gonna to go to Proverbs, and that is Proverbs 29, verse 18, where it says, where there's no revelation, people cast off restraint. The way I understand that is where there is no vision, people perish. Perish means go away. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Don't necessarily die or anything like that, but you go away. You don't you don't get successful in life. Um, so I'm a firm believer that that is one of the reasons, and that's why I write everything down every day. The other verse is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make a plan on a tablet so that you may run with it. The way I understood that is, and I have this in my notes, and this is a good, a good thing to have here. And the way I understand this is that write the vision and make the plan is basically what he is saying. So write the vision, which means the goal or where you want to end up in life and make a plan to get there. Because if you plan to get there, you can do it. Alrighty guys, that concludes this episode of making the tank. We will be doing other ones, obviously, because it's not finished yet. But guys, go out there and become the fabricators that you want to be and go out there and just kill it and do a good job. All right, guys, stay safe. God bless you all and have a good day.